Hello, shiny, crafty people, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim Totten, and uh, today is like a, in a part of the series of showing you how to take a standard placemat and turn it into something else fun. Now, I've already showed you how to make a bread basket and a gift bag, but today I want to show you how to turn that into a cute little uh, thing for your your silverware on a plate and we have two versions one with just the stitched edges and one with a nice black binding around it so join me over at the cutting table and i'll show you what we need to get started so what we're going to need is basically a, a placemat this one is let's see 19 by 12 at sears or 19 by 13 somewhere in there and uh, what we're going to do is is we're going to cut four out of a single placemat we can get four of these cute silverware holders and it is so easy to do in fact we're going to take advantage of the fact that there's already stitching on this and uh, we need a, something to cut with a rotary cutter and a, a, a straight edge or we can use a pair of scissors and a marking pen and then you have to decide do you want to leave it plain edges like this where I've just stitched up one side, or do you want to add a binding around the outside? So let's get started. I really love my rotary cutter and, and my uh, grid, but of course you could just use any sort of measuring tape. I've had people ask me, what do you do uh, for your surface that you cut on? And we actually use a self-healing mat from a company called Speed Press. Um, and they do all kinds of like uh, sign shop stuff. And this is a big self-healing mat that we buy in a huge amount because we cover a gigantic table with it. And then whenever the table parts of it get worn out from our daily use, then we cut it up and put it on each of our sewing tables. So I'm at this particular sewing table because we're gonna use the serger for part of this. If you have a serger, great, I'm gonna teach you. And if not, I'll show you and maybe you wanna buy a serger in the future. All right, so I'm gonna take one of these of these uh, placemats and we want to basically turn up the edge to create that part where the where our silverware is going to go in and I've gone up about uh, not quite the full distance so I didn't fold it directly in half right I've only folded up a portion and in fact I want to turn this to where it makes more sense for you watching from where you are so I'm going to fold that up to somewhere in here that I that I like it in fact if you look at the one that I did before I kind of fold it up. I made this finish up to be about, about eight inches tall here. Now I've already got a piece here. I don't want, I don't want to cut this, uh, this particular one. I've already got one that I started. And I just went over to the iron and sort of ironed it in, or you could hand press it into place where you want it. And then I just took my measurement and did it in fourths. You'll notice here, I just took, made four of them. So each of these is about four and a half inches. Now I want to take advantage of that stitch on the edge for one of these. So I'm just going to measure over four and a half inches. I'm going to use my grid to do that. And in fact, the nice part about this grid is an eight and a half inch grid. If I measured from the, <coughs> your right side, if I measured from your right side, it would be full inch, 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 inch. But from the other side, they put a half an inch. So it's actually eight and a half inch grid. So the four inches and then four and a half on this side. So I want this to be four and a half. I will go ahead and measure from this mark over four and then a half goes off that way. If that doesn't make sense, just uh, you check out yours and you'll figure out how to do it from what you already have. I'm going to cut up through there and then this one will need to be adjusted size a little bit because in fact it's more than four and a half inches. This is actually like five and a half. So I will come in here and cut this also four and a half so they'll all match. If you're crafty, I'm sure you can find something to do with this piece that came off of here. And we'll see how they put it together. They actually have this whole thing ironed together with interfacing in there. So that's an interesting piece. You could use that as a band for something. All right, so a couple things we can do with this is we can go ahead and get like a some kind of pins or a pen or mark, like maybe something that would wear off and mark where we want to do like every third. I like pins for that because this is four and a half we could just go one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, because one and a half and one and a half is three, and another one and a half is four and a half. That would be our full measurement. But we do have a, a, a stitch that are gonna go down each side to be concerned about. So what I might do differently is go a little less than one and a half. I might go uh, a little more actually from each side. So maybe one and three quarters over to make up for that space. But then it gives us an inch in the middle. So you kind of got to go either in between or just recognize that your middle one, if you go one and a half 
and one and a half, you'll take a little bit off with the stitches on either side, and then you'll have a bigger center section. But maybe that's where you put the wider item. Um, they're all going to fit because, you know, you're just putting the, the, the handle part of the, of the utensil in. So I'm going to use my measuring device here. And I will just say, go to one and a half and put a pin. And you could stitch all the layers together if you wanted. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be a problem. One and a half there, and then I'm gonna go to one and a half from the other side, which is at three. Now the nice part about this particular um, material is that it has lines already in it, right? So let's go over to the sewing machine, which is right here, and I'm gonna stitch those lines up so that we just have a place for each of those pieces of silverware to go. Now you could leave it wide open and just sort of make a pocket to put anything in, and that would be fine too. All right, so I wanna start at the side opposite of the, of the pins down here. I'm gonna to go to the opposite end, and I know that it needs to run right along that green line. So I will go in with my, my machine. I'm using a, a relatively short stitch length, although it's really not that terribly important. You're not gonna put a lot of stress on these, you know? And then as I get up toward the top, I'll just take that pin out. I don't want to go way over, so I'm just going to backstitch on that one. Come back over to the other one. Now that that's been held in there, come back to the over the other one. And I know it needs to be a bit inside that. So I'm just going to find a place on my machine that I like following. And again, each person's going to use these individually, so it's not like they're going to be comparing the two that they have in their hands. Most of the wear and tear will come at the top here where the sh things get shoved in and out you know, that uh, the silverware goes in and out. So you'll want to make sure that you've top stitched or back stitched at those to really connect it in. Now you have a couple options. You could stitch around the entire thing, but I'm going to actually, for this one, we're going to make it look like the one that has this binding on it. So when we put that binding on, we're going to be doing that um, with a strip of fabric. So I've cut some fabric two inches wide. Now this is going to make half inch binding, which is really wide. So I actually could make this a little bit smaller. It's going to literally make binding that's like, let's show you how wide it's going to be if I use a two inch piece. It's going to be a little bit wider than what's already on here, but I kind of think that's okay. I'm going to take this over to the iron and show you what it looks like when you make it, because you really do need an iron to do it. So let's go over there. Go to the iron and I'll show you. To turn this into half inch binding, you have several options. And one of them would be to fold each edge in and then fold it in half, which is a perfectly fine way to do it. Although it may not be as accurate as you'd like. The other option is to get a safety pin. Now you might want a little, want a little bigger than this, but you could put part of the safety pin, to get a tiny little bite out of your, the tiniest little bite out of your, um, out of your, um, what's the right word here? your ironing board cover and put that at a point and then go back in under half and you know, the other side of half an inch. Oh, perfect. And bring that out the other side and then hook it on. So it goes, it's, it's okay. That's great. And then you can feed this fabric underneath that. So I'll have to start it. I'll have to get down here and actually start the, the shape of it. So let me go down here and actually fold it in half. If I fold it in half, it'll give me a mark in the center where I need to, where I need to uh, start. Okay, get the iron warmed up again. And then I can open it and fold both ends into the center. Now your other option is to go to the store and just buy binding tape. And in fact, you might want a smaller binding tape anyway. Now, a lot of times at the store, they're selling you bias binding tape, which is not exactly what we need. We're not doing a bias binding because we're not trying to go around any curves. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and put that underneath and then grab some fa fabric from the other side just to get it started. It's gonna be a lot easier. Pin it back. Okay, so now that's going underneath and you can just feed this through. You can feed through by folding and getting it to fold over as you go through. And what most people do is they will put their iron down here. I'll show you a better example of that, a better 
angle of that. Put their iron maybe on a little lower setting since you're gonna be going through and just sort of fold it as it starts to go in. So I'm just using my hand here to guide that so it's the right size as it goes through the machine, through the, that, um, through that um, uh, pin, right? That safety pin. But here's the other good part to know. You can make this however makes most sense to you. So there's several options. I'm putting it underneath. This just really helps. This is one example. I really still like the folding by hand and just, because I'm really good at knowing what a half inch looks like. It's not a problem for me. So that just continues to stay there and I'm just pulling it. You'll notice I'm just pulling the fabric through and, uh, and my iron is lighting up because it's telling me, why are you laying down for so long? It's nice too to have a little heavier iron. This one keeps moving along as I go, but I can lift it up out of the way. And again, you'll see how it goes off of here. It's, it's opened up. It's hard to see on this black fabric, but it's opened up and I'm just folding both edges in and getting it folded in half and bringing it through. This helps to get it properly straightened. It's like getting another hand. The, the, the safety pin is almost like another pair of hands, another, another hand to help you. You just wanna give it a little bit of a press as it comes through there. That one's a little bit too, too folded. And you'll need quite a bit if you're doing four of these, which is like I said, is almost why it's easier just to buy your own binding, especially if you're doing something like black, which is real basic, you know, you can buy black binding. If you're trying to match up a very specific color, then you'd really wanna make sure. Like if you were making your own napkins, which <laughs> I don't have time before Christmas to do that. If you're making your own napkins, you would definitely maybe wanna match everything. Wouldn't that be nice? All right, I'm gonna be almost done with this and then I'm gonna go back over to the sewing machine and show you how to top stitch this one. And then after that, we're going to use the serger, which is gonna be even faster. All right, so I've made myself some binding and I'm gonna go here to the machine and start putting it together. So I'm gonna lay the binding here. I'm just gonna figure out a side that I wanna sew it on and I'll figure out which side I think, uh, which side is a little bit more over so that when I start, uh, it'll get the back too. I open up the binding and I'm gonna lay this in and I just find a, a side that I don't mind thinking it'll cross back over and I'm good over here. And I'm not gonna try to, I'm just gonna double this over. I'm not going to try to, um, on this one it's hard to tell, but I doubled it over. I'm not gonna try to stitch the two ends together. Fun that when we get down to the corners, and I show you what we do in the corners, we're gonna stitch all the way to the end. But don't go off, if that makes sense. Just go right parallel, right to that end point where it, it stops. All right, then I'm going to open this binding up and flatten out that edge. So it turns the corner and it's gonna naturally create these triangle shapes. See here, it naturally creates that triangle shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically open that up and turn it so that triangle is there. And I'm using that pre-ironed in fold and I'm just gonna fold these to triangles. See how that kind of comes to a triangle point there? All right, so I'll put it back under the machine and go back to that triangle point, backstitch a little bit. And this is gonna be so hard to see. No one's even gonna notice because they'd have to like use a magnifying glass. And the other thing you can do when you're getting to this point, you stop again at the other end, just like we did in the last corner. Just double check the back and make sure it's gotten through all of your stitches. That's gonna be an important point, that it actually went through both sides of that material. You don't wanna have any openings left. I just, I don't like it, so I'm gonna trim all these little threads while I'm here. Same thing on this corner. I'm just gonna open it up, push down that corner point, right? It kind of pushes out, see? Kind of pushes out there. And run that line along there and just fold my, my front and my back down so that it gives that triangle point. Now, when I get back to the start, I will literally just cross over and clip and fold and cross over. You'll notice too that I'm going pretty close on this edge to the edge because I know the back part goes a little further over. 
And then I do the same thing here at this point, only two more corners left. Push that corner in, really crease it with my fingers. Oh, looking so good. When I made this binding, and a lot of times the ones you'll buy at the store, they'll have a side that cheats. In other words, it's a little bit shorter than the other side. So that when you go to sew it, you are, can be guaranteed that the side that's going along the back is going a little further in. So you can top this, this one. So you'll notice it's a little further, there's a little more space in this one than this one. That's on purpose. Oh, more threads. You could stitch it, you could trim those threads later, but I, honestly, I so often forget, so it's easier to do it as I'm going along. Okay, last side, and remember, as we get down to this end over here, I'm just gonna basically cover it over. All right. If these were gonna be used every day of the year, I might, might wanna make, I might wanna connect these two pieces together, but they're not, so this is a Christmas thing. I'm just gonna trim it a little past where we're gonna go, and I'm literally just trimming it flat. You could fold it, and then it just becomes a lot more work. Stitch down to the end, back stitch, trim my threads, and just make sure I look at both sides. Everything looks acceptable. I'm gonna go ahead and put my, my silverware in. Oh, look how good that looks. And now I have that cute thing I can go right on top of a, um, it can go onto my, either next to my, my place setting or right on top of the plate. And so if you have some plain, simple white plates, I'll show you that at the end what that would look like. This really dresses it up. All right, let's, let's do something different with the last one of these. The last one of these I'm gonna put through the serger. And I have my sergers already done with black thread. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna walk you through my serger here for just a second. It has four threads, okay? And that's because there are four cones at the top. Now, a serger can be difficult to understand. So I'm gonna go through a really quick overview of what a serger does. Um, it's gonna basically sew like the inside of a shirt or you know, like a shoulder seam where it's got an overlock of thread along the edges. And the way it does that is it has two threads on the bottom and those are called the upper looper and the lower looper. And oh my gosh, this thing needs to be cleaned like crazy. Anyway, these, these loopers move. Can you see them moving in there? They move and then the needles go up and down. You have two needles in there because they, I really should have cleaned this one before I showed it to you. <laughs> uh, this has been used a lot and my employees um, usually clean these when they come in Monday morning. So I'm using it over the weekend. It doesn't look so hot, but it, it will once they come in Monday and start working on it. The, the process as we stitch through, and I'll show you what that looks like. When I put this through the machine, it not only stitches the edge, but it's gonna cut off any materials. So if I went like this, you'll notice it's cutting this material off. So it can, you, can, you don't have to trim in advance. In fact, look how nice that is when it comes through. You get this nice four thread overlock stitch, which locks over the edge. So it locks in the seam. It means I don't have to finish the seam. This does it for me. And if this was two pieces of fabric, then you could open it and it would be like the seam of a shoulder of a t-shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch these, this one, and I'm gonna stitch all four sides around as we do it. All right, so I'm just gonna put it into the machine on this fold, and I'm not gonna stitch, any, I'm not gonna cut anything off, so I'm gonna run right next to the blade. And all I gotta do for my machine is, is sew right to that, um, use the edge of the presser foot to do that. I'm gonna come out to the corner and I'll just trim that even though it would get cut off by the stitch if I had to. And I'll go across the top. And then I'll just trim that a little bit. I'll have to come back and trim this thread here. And then I'm gonna come down and do this side as well. Now I just have to be really careful when I go through that I push all of this material through. And I go a little slower on my serger because it's going through a lot of layers right here. And the last thing I would decide is, do I want to stitch the bottom edge too? Well, I kind of think it doesn't need it because it's a fold. And then I didn't stitch this top edge right here either because it was already stitched. So it just was the decorative outside of this. And then I'll come in and just trim off these stitches. Now, if I really wanted to make sure this is gonna be used every single day, you could come in and thread these threads through a needle and just pull them down through the, the stitch if you wanted to. And then they would not be clipped off there and, and maybe fray at all but I'm really not worried. This is not gonna be used that often. Now, right now, this has just made a pocket because I didn't stitch those 
pieces in, but I could come, I could either use it as a pocket, just as a simple pocket for my silverware, right? Or for a napkin or something else, I could sort of just leave those in there nice and flat, or I could come back in and stitch those down if I wanted to. And that's just a different way to finish that up. Of course, on this one, I just went to my regular sewing machine and it already had a white stitch down the edge. So I just stitched it down and then white stitched the edge here as well. So there's all these different options. So again, the great part about this particular design is that you really have a lot of options of how you want to turn this placemat into these cute different uh, pieces to put on your on your uh, place setting to maybe dress it up so that it matches the placemat you would have underneath. All right, right now I wanna show you what this would look like on a table. This is uh, my table at my house. And uh, it's just a lovely way to have uh, people with a matching set with the bread basket and with the, uh, the silverware holders and the lovely placemat underneath. So thank you for joining me today for this great placemat recycling, upcycling, change around quick project. Um, until next time, folks, stay crafty. Bye for now.